size for your insides They make you brave, make you bold, make you brave L.B. Love forever, love forever, ever, ever be Read it backwards, read it forwards, read it backwards I for your insides, for your outsides, for your insides They make you brave, make you bold, make you brave L.B. Love forever, love forever, ever, ever
children. How are y'all doing today? I hope that y'all enjoyed singing and dancing and praising for the Lord. You know, remember we talked about it. He loves to hear you sing and dance for him. So I really hope that y'all, and I pray that y'all did enjoy uh, your music. Again, I haven't changed it because I know those are all y'all's favorites. So welcome today. Thank God that we're here together. Bless this day and let us uh, get started, okay? So we're going to say our prayer. Bow your little heads and we say, Our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So again, children, let's thank God for bringing us together. Let's let's tell them thank you, thank you, thank you for the, the time that we spent together last weekend. We got to be in the same place, in the same area, underneath the same uh, same roof that, every, that all of us together, which is a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. So... Let's go ahead and get ready for communion. So go get your items and then um, we'll do communion as a family together, okay? All right. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for bringing us together, Lord God. Thank you for this table. Thank you for these elements, Lord God. May you make them from the natural to the spiritual, Lord God. May they fill our hearts. May they fill our mind and our souls. Lord God, we love you and we thank you. We honor you. In your son's most beautiful name we pray. Amen. On the night that he was going to be betrayed, he's sitting with his disciples and friends. Remember like we did last week when I told you that there was 12 of y'all, so it was beautiful that it was 12 of y'all celebrating the life of Jesus that was going to be given to us. Again, we celebrate it today. He took a piece of bread. He lifted it. He blessed it. He broke it. And he said, this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same manner, he took the cup, he raised it up to his father, he blessed it, and he said, this is my blood, the new covenant, the new promise that your sins will be forgiven. Each time that you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful elements lord god may they fill our, our bodies may they nourish us and may they provide all that we need amen we eat and now we drink and we say thank you jesus for your sacrifice we love you and we honor you and we trust you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> all right, children. So that's always, always, always so beautiful to be able to do, to share and to sit and eat as a family. All right. So today's gospel is actually out of Luke. We're still in Luke, okay? So get your Bibles ready. And it is uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 25 through 33. Again, Luke 14, 25 through 33. This is the word of the Lord. The cost of being a disciple. A large crowd was following Jesus. He turned around and said to them, If you want to be my disciples, you must dislike everyone else by comparison. Your father, your mother, your wife, your children, your brothers and sisters. Yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. And if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. But don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction... For who would begin construction on a building without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough money to finish it? Otherwise, you must complete only the foundation before running out of money. And then everyone 
would laugh at you. They would say, there's the person who started that building and couldn't afford to finish it. Or what king would go to war against another king without first sitting down with his counselors to decide whether the army of his army of 10,000 can defeat an army of 20,000 soldiers marching against them. And if he can't, he will send a delegation to discuss terms of peace while the enemy is still far away. So you cannot become my disciple without giving up everything that you own. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let us discuss today's sermon lesson. This is today's picture. Look. Counting the cost. Okay? Counting the cost. That is the, the, the title for today. And what does that mean? You know, in the beginning, Jesus says you have to dislike your family, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your your whole family, your even uh, even yourself, it says. You have to dislike yourself. Well, those are kind of like, you might think, I don't understand that. That doesn't make no sense because in the, in the Ten Commandments it says, honor thy father and mother, right? And love each other as I love you. Well, I understand that there could be a confusion. So let me ask you, when, remember when y'all were baptized, most of y'all have been baptized, and we always says, do you love God? Yes. Do you love God? Yes. Do you love God? Remember? Three times we ask. And even uh, uh, when, when Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Right? Well, see, when Jesus was walking the earth, he wanted, that was what he was doing. He was getting disciples. He was getting people that were going to follow him. Even to this day, that's what he does. He gets people to follow him, to believe in him, to love him, to trust him, to honor him. So that means that when you say, I, I love Jesus, he wants to know that you really love Jesus, that you really love him, that you really love God. He wants to know that, yes, I would do anything because you know what? He did everything for us. Like we said last week and the week before, that Jesus died on the cross. Jesus shed his last drop of blood for us, for us, for us, for the love of us, because he loves us so much. So, you know, and we always say, and I tell y'all, we have to do as Jesus does, as Jesus did, as Jesus will do and forever always be like Jesus. That's why we're here. That's why we're on this earth, to be like Jesus. So when Jesus said, I love God, I love God, and I will give you all of me for the love of y'all, to so y'all can love me because we love God. Do you understand? So no matter what right now, if you, I mean, like, what is it that you love most of, all, of anything in the world? You have a toy, or do you have a book, or do you have um, an animal, a pet, that you just say, I love this more than anything in the world. I love my mom, I love my dad more than anything in the world. Well, that's not really true, if you think about it, because you're supposed to love God more than anything in the world. Do you understand? I'm not saying don't love your parents or don't love your pets or don't love your toys. What I'm saying is don't love them before you love God. You have to love God first. The very first commandment, love God. There was no other God but him. That's the one we love. He's the one we, we trust. He's the one we follow. He's the one we believe. We believe everything. Because God told us, God tells us to this day. That's what I'm saying. So if you, if, if, if somebody told you, how much money do you want for your, say, back in my day when I was y'all's age, 
I used to love to play marbles. We throw them and we flick them with our thumb like this and we play marbles. Well, I had my favorite marbles that I loved and I would not part with them. It's like, nope, nope, these are mine, these are mine. But then if somebody came to me and said, instead of playing you for them, because we used to trade them, right? I'll give you $5. And I was like, nah, nah, because I loved them so much. And I wanted, those were my prized possessions. But guess what? One day I played and I lost them. So see, no amount of money could have helped me keep them because I would have been giving them away. Just like when I lost them playing, nothing helped me keep them. The love that I had for the marble didn't help me keep it. Right? That's what I'm saying today. Love God and you will keep everything that you have. Because through God, we have everything that we have. Because we love him so much, he takes care of us. And he'll give us what we need. He's not going to let us keep things that we don't need or that are going to hurt somebody else because we hold on to it. We need to share everything with everybody because God gives it to us. But we can't, we can't say, I love this more than I love God. Because then things are going to be twice as hard, twice as rough, and twice as mean. I'm not saying you can have anything. You can say, I love you, or I love that, but you have to love God first. Okay? Amen. All right, children, let's bow our little heads. Thank you, Father, for bringing us together. We love you. And we thank you, Lord God. Bless our bishop, our church, our family, and our friends. We love you above all. In your son's most beautiful name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love you, children. And until next time, okay? Take care of you. Take care of each other. Take care of you. Love God first. Besitos.